Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey everybody, this is Alex and this is the Ramble and we're here until midnight tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, he's back again. It's almost as if we just did this. Yes, it's almost as if we just <laughs> did this. You have to wear glasses now, I can't see that well. I'm just like, God, I'm getting to be, a, do I look like an old man? You have since I've known you. Oh, you boy. You know, to, that was a great thing. The door. For, for nine years when I needed self-esteem, I, I relied on Albert. <laughs> you? Yeah, yeah. How you doing? I'm doing well, thank you. Yes, yes. Your wife, you say, may come home any moment. There may be noise in your house, but we don't care. No, she's home, but she's she's in the back of the house there, and she's coming back back in so oh okay well, just warning you yeah well, we just we just had an hour talk that's all you know mm-hmm. but anyway we were last time we were talking about elon musk we were talking about ai we were talking right. about you know the, the future of ai and i think i left it off by, by the way let me just say i don't like the term ai i don't think there's such a thing as artificial intelligence intelligence is intelligence yeah it's yeah. It be manufactured yeah. or human i call it manufactured intelligence well, if it's artificial, uh-huh. then it would seem artificial. And what they're trying to do is to do something that doesn't seem artificial. Right. In other words, you get a call from somebody, robocall, and the person sounds absolutely human to you. Right. And is talking to you, and it's AI. Then that's not artificial. I don't think so either. You know. I think manufactured but it's not artificial but i mean what they what they do is it's this whole science fiction thing you know it's gone on over the years robots take over the world colossus the forbin project you know how many times have we heard the turing test if it can pass the turing test the turing test uh, yeah exactly uh, everything's passing the turing test now so what's the big deal yeah but anyway it just doesn't it it, it you know uh, i'm not afraid of it but what i am afraid of is i think that and I told you that I'm beginning to like hate computers. And the reason I'm hating them is because the world they've given us, because remember, computers were created by human beings and they have an agenda. Up, up, up until uh, they're not. Yeah, uh, yeah, but they have an agenda, right? The human beings. Yeah. And uh, so they are using computers for all the wrong stuff. I mean, if you say what wrong stuff, anytime you get a robocall, that's a computer. Yeah. Okay. Anytime uh, you have your, you suddenly realize there's a thousand dollars missing from your bank account because somebody got your password and used it. That's computers because the world relies too much on computers now. If all the computers in the world shut down, we wouldn't know what to do. But when I was born and grew up, especially as a child between the ages of, of zero and ten, there were no computers. We got along just fine without them. That's right. But we wouldn't know what to do now, you know. You just call. just just have a. Com- have you ever gone into a convenience store where their system wasn't working? System is down. Yeah, and they system don't know what down. to do. No they credit don't. cards. Can't take credit cards. Well, who has cash now? Yeah. So what do you do? Do you know? You, you just you, lock the when, door. When you bring that up, I got to tell you, I put two hundred dollars cash in my pocket, so I'm mm-hmm. walking around with some walk around cash. Right. Do you know how much of that have you used in the last month? Probably none. Nothing. There's no need for it. Nothing. Everything goes on a credit card, everything. I pay with my Apple Pay or whatever, you know. Yeah. Until the system goes down. Yeah, but if the system goes down, well, how do I get money? How do I pay myself? How do I have, have that's why I keep 200 bucks in my pocket, just in case that happens. Well, it is, what, it is what I've said for a while now, mm-hmm. uh, particularly after 9-11. I said, if you want to terrorize anyone, don't use bombs. Don't use things like that. Shut down the banking network. That's all you have to do to start. Screw, then, yeah. Shut down 
the whole computer network and then turn all the electricity off and people will go crazy. Literally, they will well, go I crazy. think the society, if all the electricity went, all, let's say all the computers went and therefore the electricity would go with it because they're, right. they're operating the computers. Right. right. Or the computers are operating them. Right. Uh, and that all went. Uh, how many people would die as a result of it? Probably a good number. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you That's think you think, you think COVID was terrible. Yeah. You know, it, 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 so the fact that we rely this much on computers should make us stop and think for a second and say, and then we're worried about AI? Yeah, yeah. You know, well, yeah, you're worried about AI because uh, quite frankly, you're relying on those computers too much you, rather than use them as an aid as something to help you. You mm -hmm. are just throwing the whole task at the computers and saying, "You, the computers are gonna do it for us. And then you back away. No, you've gotta have your finger on the button at all times. And You're you right about And that. you have to have a, have a system in place where if all the computers go down, you don't. Right, you know. right. But we just think, just think about if, if, if just all the, if the cell towers went down, all the mothers in the country that had to actually deal with their children and not have them on iPads or phones or things like that at the time for those who use them, and a lot of them do. Think about the craziness that would put the parents through. Well, there are kids who are like two years old that have an iPad. Yes, yes I know that. Yeah. I know that. Uh, you know, I, I just, uh, it, the world has changed so much since I was a kid. I mean, and admittedly, when I was a kid, it was a long time ago. Now. That's an old man thinking phrase. Well, right yeah, there. but 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 <laughs> but there's nothing wrong with that. It was a simple world. There was, you know, there were very little things electronically that could ruin our life if they suddenly stopped working. Okay. Remember books? Yeah. Oh yeah. Remember books? I still I still have some. Uh, yeah, so does Marjorie. Oh. But you know what? I got her years ago. We got an iPad. And I said, just try the Kindle. Oh, I bought her a Kindle. Remember when you could buy the Kindle? Okay. Yeah, yeah. I bought her a Kindle. And she says, I don't know if I can get used to this. Now, that's where she reads all her books. Now, well, admittedly. I, I do it on my, on my thing, too. Admittedly. I do it on my phone. Admittedly, the positive there is you're not ruining the ecology. You know, you aren't tearing down right. tons of, of trees and so on to make the books. I don't think that's a bad thing. I think that's a good thing. Because they made it so that when you're reading on your iPad, you flip the page, you know, you have the same kind of feel that you have in reading a book. So, I mean, uh, the delivery system should never be blamed as being bad, you know. But, I agree. But the thing is that we just, you know, the thing that I'm down about computers is I wish they didn't exist. I, I honestly think we would be a better world if they didn't exist. You wouldn't, you wouldn't have problems with elections and you wouldn't have the, oh, the social. You wouldn't have problems oh, with elections. Excuse me, social, social media, let's talk about that for a second. I mean, you say that there's no such thing as AI, there's no such thing as social media. I, I, I can't talk to that because I'm not on any of it, so I really, I really don't know how bad it well, is. Well, I don't, I don't use Twitter but I do rely on Facebook to let my audience know what's happening tonight on the show. Mm -hmm. okay, okay, that's all I use it for. I, huh. I, at one point I was posting my random thoughts and I never, by the way, ever posted picture of food that I was having for dinner, by the way. When you do that, you should have all your computer privileges taking, taken away from you. Ever me. had a picture of your poop in the toilet uh, on no, Facebook? No, I never, I never did that yeah. either. But, uh, look at my phlegm. Can you tell me what my problem is? N none of that. Yeah, right. So, you know, but I mean, I, uh, um, you know, I just, I just think that w we d never used computers for the best stuff, okay? And for the stuff it could really do to improve the um, human race, we've only done it, you know, robocalls. Okay, that's the biggest invention of the uh, of the twenty uh, first century so far. You know, yeah, I feel the same way as you do, but there's nothing you can do about it. And no, there, oh no, there you're not going to no stop going it. back. Yeah. There's no going back unless 
what I spoke about, did I speak about it in the last episode or this episode about if, if somebody were to take down the whole system, yeah. then yeah. we'd be back in the in the old days well that's all they have to do it's manageable that's oh they will they will at some point somebody will there's no question about the it. the russians have been working on it for years forget about the russians there are there are there are individuals who say humanity is garbage and i'm i'm the first one who's gonna and we've talked about the oh. chat they have chaos gpt there's some little g there's some little genius living in his yes. parents basement well then dad don't don't berate the people living in their parents basement please that's not nice Okay, but they're living in their parents' basement anyway. Probably are. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and and they alone could take down the entire system. If if they have the Elon Muskian way about them, yes, they yeah. probably could figure yeah. a way to do that. And, and 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 we could get along fine without it, and we'd build up again. But this is the way. This is the way of yeah, the but, world. But, but but if that all stopped, how many people would die as a result of it? I mean. Uh, do we you think there's a hospital in this country that doesn't operate on computers now? Oh, no. You know? Not at all. But that's the way it is. Hey, listen, it, it, it's, going to, it's going to change everything. You've said you, you, had, uh, uh, you went to a program that can do announcements that sound almost as oh, good. Then somebody sent me to a place, a place. Maybe it was, was it you that sent it to me, that place you can go? Yes, I did. Company, I did. There's a company in radio now that will supply you with an AI programming. Right. You the just write the script, yeah. or you don't even have to no, write the script. No, it writes the scripts for you, it and for it you. announces. It, it has and, lifelike announcers. And my, my point to bringing this up in the last episode was simply to say that this will be the way that information is delivered Wait in the future. I just found out something good about computers. It may do away with talk show hosts and disc jockeys. Well, that's that's, that's exactly a what I was going to say. That's a positive. I'm going to tell you that will happen. There's no doubt I mean, about it. I don't and think I don't think that any AI could be more mediocre than most radio people in this country. Regardless, yeah. the, the, and they will probably come to a point where they'll be very acceptable and very believable. Mm -hmm. But the thing I wanted to say is that you are one of the most fortunate people because you were able to do something that you are very, very good at, that very few people could do, that is an art, and you were able to do it your whole life long and do it well. Uh, you know, you're right. I mean, I so, thought about that the other night and I, I just went, you know, I, rather, I really can't gripe about my life. I've been very lucky. Yes, you have. You know? Yes, you have. As have I, and I, I'm no, you know, I'm not. I don't have the kind of popularity a Howard Stern has or a Joe Rogan has, but my career has been pretty solid. I mean, it stopped about ten years ago being that solid, but you know, I mean, I took a chance on coming to New York. I managed to get a job for nine years at Sirius XM. I thought about all the other jobs I got, you know, that were like my whole history in San Francisco was very successful. You know, and I so I can't I can't gripe about any of it. Well, it is uh, it is now um, the end of May, mm -hmm. right? Right. Twenty twenty three. Mm -hmm. Let us let us reconvene in twenty thirty three. Well, I don't know if I'll be around for that. Oh, but yes, you, you will. But you We're, you can get on with it without me. No, when you're here in 2033, we will take this topic and revisit it. Oh, 2033, I'd be 93. Be 93. And so what? I could make it. I could make. You're it. still going to have back pains. We know that. But you'll. Oh, but you'll oh, be, I'll be in a wheelchair by then. I'm sure. It doesn't matter. You'll still be doing this. This. This show. Some in. Some, in whatever way it is in the future. Maybe. Listen, Marjorie and I do this little thing where we go to the park and we talk for five minutes and then we tongue kiss each other and that's it. Okay. That thing gets more people watching it than anything else I do. <laughs> did, I, did I get a link to that? It's on my Facebook page. You no, don't send there. me that link. Don't send me that link. Okay, no, no. We, we always call it the old people kissing. That's our, our whole premise for the show. You know, you probably get great, great reviews. Do you have it on YouTube? Yeah, yeah, I put it up on YouTube. Put, make it a separate channel. Make it its own channel. A different episode each time. Or I should make an old people kissing channel and have people send me their tapes. 
their files rather tapes. There you go. Files. There you go. Their files. That's all you need. And then and I have it, a whole it, whole page of people, old people kissing. That's it. What? what how long is your is this segment that you do? Oh, you sometimes it's f two minutes and sometimes it's seven minutes. You know, that's perfect. seven is a bit too long. Yeah. But if you, two to three minutes, that's a channel. That's a big channel. Yeah. And if and if you put it up. I, get, I want at least 10 percent just for the just for telling you to put that up yeah okay you get to, I'll give you 10 percent 10 percent of nothing 10 percent yeah 10 percent of nothing so far is Zilcho. I, I got my 10 percent already perfect but anyway you know uh, th this is not the world I, I mean when I when I was hot into computers and saw the future of them the future I didn't see was where they can take anything and just spoil it you know just use it for all the wrong purposes. And what did you think was going to happen? What did you think humans gonna were gonna do? Create a, a utopian society where I everybody thought, lives I, I thought it would. I thought. I, let me put it this way: I thought we would. Have you want, know any humans in your lifetime? What? Have you known any humans in your lifetime? This is what we do: we spoil things. Yeah, well, I mean, we 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 absolutely spoiled the whole computer revolution. We used it all for the wrong purposes. And I, you know, I use the robocall as the perfect example because I think that's the most annoying example of something we all have to deal with, you know. But that's all because of the computer generation, because of computers. You didn't have robocalls even th 20 years ago. So tell me what, what was your thought of what the computer would do for us? What was going to happen? I thought it would democratize a lot of things. I, th I think the fact that people can do a show like this, okay, mm -hmm. and put it out over YouTube is kind of a democratizing of broadcasting. We don't have to go get a license for it. We don't have to spend a fortune to build a yeah. studio, you know, whatever. It can just be done very simply and it democratizes broadcasting. The only thing is, what kind of broadcasting got democratized with podcasting. Uh, now we have the latest story in this murder mystery. Uh, you know, one murder mystery after another. Or misinformation. You know, it created more misinformation than it did information. But misinformation's been around as long as humanity. Yeah, but you couldn't spread it as fast. Well, that's true. You know, Marjorie goes, isn't this a horrible world we're living in? I said, if you watch MSNBC all the time, yes. You know, because all the news organizations, they have 24-7 uh, to fill up with stuff. And the only stuff that really leads is if it bleeds. You know, and so you look at that constantly, which she does, you're going to think the world's going to hell in a handbasket. They don't well, tell that's you. why people say think the world is a bad place is because we're exposed to exposed to more of the bad things. Well, I mean, but it, it's, it's actually not as bad a place as it was a hundred years ago. I mean, everything that everything that happens where somebody gets killed in the subways or whatever, there's a video of it now. Yeah. Okay. You know, and then they show that, and they don't show it just once. They show it over and over and over. And what and do over. you call that? Breaking news. They call that the news cycle. It's breaking news. It's breaking I heard news. Something the other day. Not only was it breaking news, but it was a special edition of whatever thing it was. Of breaking news. Of the regular of the regular show that it was. Breaking news. Uh. I'd like to have one little thing on the bottom. It's a breaking wind. Breaking wind. Right. Breaking wind. You know. But anyways, uh, you know, I mean, I just, uh, I, I'm just very, I'm dis. Probably what I'm disappointed in is not computers. I shouldn't blame computers. I blame the people who utilize them and then utilize them for all the wrong reasons. That's what I said. It's not the computers, it's the humans. Yeah, so we want the world taken over by computers? I mean, if computers, could computers rule the world? I mean, if they could, I mean, eventually they can. There's no question about it. Can they rule the world? Yeah. Well, I, I, I think that they probably could One have- One computer a talks to another computer, like the Forbin, Colossus, the Forbin Project. You remember that movie? Yeah, yeah. You know. Well, it's 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 been predicted for for decades now that uh, that that machines will build more machines that are better and smarter than the ones that built them. I think they have some machine some computers now that can actually fix themselves. And why not? Why not? And what will happen? The the machines won't take over the earth. 
the humans will die away because they can't compete with that. But what are, and what are those machines going to want? But the reliance on computers. I mean, yesterday I was doing an interview with Steve Kravitz, mm -hmm. and I started, and he didn't have any audio. And I tried everything. I tried getting everything going that he could to get him up and running, and it wouldn't work. And then he says, well, they say there's an update to my Windows. So I said, okay, we'll update it. And he updated it, and we got his audio. There it is. But we spent a half hour trying to get his audio. That computer should have been able to fix itself. Well, that will come. That will come. And I imagine, I imagine it would have if he told the computer, you know, like, upgrade me anytime there's an upgrade. Well, but mine tells me every time there's an upgrade. Well, yeah, but... Do you want to start now or do you want to do it later? Yeah, yeah, you know. yeah. And, and down the road, it'll do it on its own in the background. Look how far we've come in computers. Remember when you used to have to fix all the, all the little parts of the hard drive because there would be sectors that were bad and you had to run that once a month. I've never and do heard of that lately. You never hear of that anymore. You don't hear about it at all. Oh, by the way, you don't hear about hard drives. No, you have solid state now, Yeah, which, which is the way it's supposed to be anyway. Well, yeah. I don't get from to hard drives to start with. I don't know. Yeah, well, this machine I have here, the new one I got is solid state all the way through. Yeah, and it it boots up in where an average Apple took forty five seconds to boot, right? This mm -hmm. thing boots up, and I would say I timed it once. It was like ten seconds. I I say it, for the future of humanity, beware for two things. One is when we're when we have earphones, ear earphones that go in your ear, not not biological earphones that are completely waterproof. That's one. We've made we've made a huge stride. And the second one is when we have a computer or a TV system or something where there's no circle. When that happens, we've reached oh, oh, uh, well, the apex. Well, the, you're, talking, you're talking about the beach ball of death. Yes. Or yeah. In, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, part of that is, in case people don't know, is that your machine is looking for the hard drive or it's looking for something. And the less memory you have, the more often you get that. I very seldom get the beach ball of death on this computer. But very your seldom. TV, it still happens. Oh, yeah. You know, oh, searching yeah. And, for and Wi-Fi. guess what? Signal. When your TV, tell me this, folks, if this isn't true, when your TV isn't working, who's the first person you blame? The cable company. No, yourself. Must be something I did. And then well, when you eliminate that, you figure it's the cable system. You should always think it's the cable system first. I, I never blame myself. Oh, I do. I think, I think it's, but I'm it's, Jewish. it's I'm always Jewish. the connection. Something with the connection. I'm, I'm Jewish, and we by, by birth are told to blame ourselves for everything. Okay. You know. Right. But, I mean, it, 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 you know, I just think that we've got to reassess how we use the technology and I think the biggest problem with the technology isn't AI, it's people. Yes, yes yeah. it is, yes it is. And, the, and their desire to make a buck, that's for starters. I mean, people, I remember when my business manager got his first computer, which actually I, I kind of encouraged the whole thing. We both got IBMs. And I taught him, I, I showed him something on an Atari, believe it or not, a copy of VisiCalc which was the first accounting software where before you used to as a, you know, as, as an accountant like he was, you do a spreadsheet and you right. have all these numbers down, then you had to add them all up. Well, what VisiCalc does, well, you put all the numbers in and then it all adds it up for you, you know? He was so overwhelmed by that. Next day, he was out buying us computers. He, uh, he got me, I bought one and he bought one. All of a sudden, he found he could do his work faster. And what did he do when he had it faster? He just added more clients. He didn't. More he people, didn't change, more money. He didn't. Yeah. He didn't lessen the workload. He enhanced the workload because he could do more of it in a shorter amount of time. Well, uh, what we shouldn't say is how can we do this faster and make more money out of it, but how can we better use it and not try to try to push it. Uh, you, you know, not to increase the volume, but to increase the accuracy, you know, and things like that. So, I mean, I, the, the problem is that you, it, computers were a great idea. Human beings operating them were 
nothing we can do about that. Yeah. But the next the next time we get together, mm-hmm. um, another thing another thing we might which you just touched on we might talk about is is this uh, uh, this human need to get more more and more money and things, which which I think creates great problems in society. Oh, I think it does too. Yeah. Hey, listen, we've run out of time. I really, yeah. you know, I, I stick around after we're through here. I, oh. I, I really, I, you know, I enjoy this. And this is better than the other stuff I do because you and I are actually talking about stuff. That's what I want to do. You know, uh, want a show? Uh, <laughs> uh, no, not yet. Hey, we're handing out shows like they're candy at a party. Uh, you know. I, ha- I have YouTube channels coming up my butt. So, who, who, I mean, how many, how many, you don't need to do that. Yeah, don't need to do that. Hey, listen, I love talking with you. Let's do it again, okay? Let's do it. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, Albert Reynoso. Thanks, Albert. Bye. Bye Bye-bye. Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey, hello, everybody. How are you? What's happening? How you doing? What's new? Oh, boy, I'm trying to, I, you know, when I take a couple of days off, I have to then come in and recalibrate everything and get everything going just right here. Let me just get all these things going here. Anyway, hello. How are you? How was your weekend? Uh, how was your Monday? How was your Tuesday? By the way, how was, how's your, most of your Wednesday? Okay, good. All right. Anyway, uh, I'm here, and I'm uh, ready to go, I guess. I'm... You know, I I just am always tired, you know, and I think it has a lot to do with having had the COVID. But uh, I, I'm 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 a, a awake enough to take care of this. Okay, so let's just uh, see what happens here. Um, let me see here. Let me let me let me bring some of these people in here. I, I will admit all, and then I will also do this so that okay there they are they're coming mm-hmm. in there's charlie and there's brian and there's uh, jeff oh okay uh gee hardly anybody here well what the hell screw them all all right see what happened now jeff just left nice job alex thanks a lot yeah. <laughs> <laughs> jeff was very offended he, he hung up he, he was offended by what you saying well there's some people here well, there are some people here. No, he probably had some problem with audio or something like that. So he just thought by rebooting, he'll he'll be back. He yeah. always yeah he always. Well, if I have problems with my computer, it is definitely not my fault because I didn't change anything. Well, you know something that doesn't really matter. <laughs> you know, I've actually had things change themselves. That's what I'm saying. So somebody else made the problem. Yeah. Um, look at that. You got a little dot from the sun on your forehead, and it kind of looks like you're a spy and somebody's ready to yeah. shoot you or something. Yeah, you you're know? in somebody's sight. In somebody's sight, yeah. yeah. So you got you got to look like you got a tan, sunburn. Yeah, I got a little color. Got a little, little color? That looks like a lot of color. Memorial Day because weekend. It, it, Usually I get more. Usually I burn myself every year. but Yeah, it was Memorial it, Day. It, and, yeah, and you yeah. Know, none of you guys wrote me to say thank you for your service i told you on monday thank you oh yeah you told me on monday but he wasn't even around on monday to tell me i was too busy making sure you're good every day that i'm what that you were good every day that i was good every day yeah you're covid remember oh i see okay oh Mm. speaking covid i got my uh second bivalent booster today Mm. the second Second one, yep. Well, wait a minute. Does that mean you've had seven so far? I've had, no, I have my second booster. I had the first one in October. Oh, I, I see. Okay, so I've had my sixth shot total. Yeah, I've had six. Okay. And look what it did for me. Yeah. Well, I haven't had COVID yet. Well, just just <laughs> hold on, you know. I mean... It's, it, yeah, it's especially now. Well, it, the thing is, is that we kind of said, okay, it's, uh, the president said there's no more COVID, and the uh, um, all, all. And by the way, if you're listening, YouTube, I didn't just say that. I'm quoting the president. Okay, I'm so afraid of even talking about COVID. 
you know, I was the one who here with with uh, with uh, uh, what do you call it with uh, uh, Gabnet. I used to run spots every night on, on all the things you should do during COVID. And I was really a, a big proponent of getting the right messages out there and everything. And for them to then slam this thing on me, you know, uh, because of something somebody on my show said referring yeah. to something that Fox had said that was wrong. That was the nature of the conversation. And I said, I protested it, so they went back and had a human being listen to it. Well, they still only listened to that one quote. They didn't take it, it was taken completely out of context. And if they had listened to the whole thing, they would see that we were saying this was terrible what Fox was doing. But now I have a strike against, not a strike against me, but a warning against me. Mm. And the next time I'll get a strike if they find something. And they had to go back to 2021. Mm to find this thing. I mean, I hate YouTube. Yeah. I'm, I'm thinking seriously of paying 75 bucks a month and paying for a, um, a, a feed where I don't have to worry about any of this, you know? And don't worry, to, huh? Elon Musk is gonna have his Twitter yeah. video thingy going pretty soon, so you can join that. I'll do it, I'll do it, who cares, you know? If he if it works and if he doesn't get as Nazi like as uh, yep. as as YouTube, but YouTube is ridiculous. They're just ridiculous. I mean they they don't they 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 said okay now you we we looked at it you can't protest it again. <laughs> well maybe I want to write you and tell you hey look you know I it it, it was said on my show, but you didn't get it in context because if you gotten it before when the person said, did you hear what Fox did today? And then the other part about, isn't that horrible what Fox does by giving this kind of misinformation? No, they just took the misinformation and said it was my fault. I was passing bad information. Fuck you, YouTube. Oh, by the way, I just need to oh, get demonetized. I just oh, got demonetized. Go. Now you're demonetized. I wonder if I start a, a thing where I start doing railing against uh, YouTube. Okay, if uh, if they will then try and take me off, hmm. you know, let, let, let's try what they see what their freedom of speech is all about, you know. So anyway, hello, Alan, how you doing? I'm uh, doing pretty good. How are you doing, Alex? Uh, I'm fine. I'm fine. I, I uh, had a good Memorial Day. I got all those calls from people saying thank you for your service, yeah. uh, and. Uh, this hat makes me look red. I'll live with it. It makes you look red? My face looks red. It's, to, a, bl it's a black hat. How does it make your face I, look I, I red? I don't know. Well, well, look, here here I am, a red face. Take the hat off, and I go back to natural colors. Really? Yeah. So anyway, we did another thing out in the uh, park the other day. It was only about five minutes. And I saw uh, that. And you, I, talked, you, you spent five minutes talking about the bags under your eyes. And over 500 people. Have watched really? it so oh, far. It. Yeah, right. So you know, isn't that wonderful? What happens? You know, I mean, I get, I get, uh, I get uh, over five hundred people uh, checking us out, and we only went for five minutes. Go figure. Oh. Go figure. So anyway, ah, uh, so um, am I on? I, are you are you okay now, Jeff? I am no. I I. The one problem is I don't have my assistant here. Oh, oh I'll be right over. <laughs> you know, I don't know if Pamela, who's your wife, yes, oh yeah, likes being that. referred to as your assistant. Yeah, no. <laughs> but I can only say that because she's not here. Oh, if I said that about Marjorie. They yeah. would kill her. Yeah. And they would talk about each other, and they would talk about us. Yeah, yeah. They do that. Yeah. But uh, so as she, well, Marjorie. Uh, Marjorie is. Uh, she's. She, you know what she's doing now? She's taking old lady uh, workout lessons. Good. Uh, yeah, it, because of her back and things like that. So she's taking these. These. I don't know. I can't describe them, but she does it twice a week, 
and supposedly she's in great pain after they're over with. So, so they must be working. Yes, you know? that's right. Sounds like Phil Meyer. Yeah. Oh, Phil Meyer. All his exercise programs that aren't that are leaving him in pain. Yeah, yeah. Is he losing weight? Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Losing weight. He, 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 the other day, he hurt his shoulder. Uh, a few weeks ago, it was his ankle or his leg or who the hell knows. Oh, yeah, back. because working out's really good for you. You know? Right? Yeah. Well, he goes to one of these things, I think, uh, that, you know, that if you're a triathlete, you go to it to, to get stronger. And he likes, I don't know, it's expensive, too. I don't know what he's Well, if it's expensive, for. he'll do it. Yep. You know, this That's is a guy right. who, by the end of his life, isn't going to have any money because he spends it all on just p buying the best thing he can buy. His choice. You know. Well, you know, he, oh, I just bought a new $5,000 Nikon or something like that. And I'm going, yeah. have you tried the iPhone? <laughs> <laughs> I just looked at some, vit and some uh, just photographs I took at lunch the other day of Marjorie. Yeah. The quality that an iPhone has for for film it just surpasses anything I've ever owned, and I've owned some pretty good, damn good cameras in my time, you know. Um, so I mean, but no, Phil likes to spend money. He, you know, he will. Uh, I mean, I wish I had something to sell him. I, I'd charge him more than it's worth because he'd pay it. You know, he, you know, he makes good money and he enjoys his money. I see nothing wrong with that. Well, he makes good money, but what you want to do, and I got news for him, you want to save that money. You know? Yeah. You want to put a lot of that away, and, uh, you know. I mean, uh, um, uh, I, I am very careful, I, even when I was making a lot of money, about how much money I was spending. Although the first time around, when I was in San Francisco making like the, the $400,000 a year and more, uh, I I used up most of it, you know, taking people out to lunch. That was my big deal, you know. But I think the thing is you need to have assets. So my son has a credit card now. It says he's working at 31 Flavors. I We got in a little, little issue because he has zero dollars. He's been working there for a year. Zero dollars in his account. Yeah. Wow. Find out he's been, he's been spending it on his video games. Mm hmm and so my main thing is at the end of the month when you get your statement and it says all your money that's gone what do you have to show for that you know and he has nothing so get an asset you know buy something do something with it but well just, it, you, you know, know it. certainly you know i mean i'm uh, like my friend Shecky um had a lot of money a lot of money didn't have any kids didn't have any kids you know, exactly. didn't have, yeah. but no, but he didn't have any kids, didn't have anything, but he had a lot of money. Um, and at one point he was, he kept telling me, well, you know, I, I don't know, should I, should I take the, uh, should I take the, uh, which, which class should I fly to go to such and such a place? And I'm going, Shaggy, look how much money you've got. Take the best, you know, if you're going a long, on a long trip, Take uh, go first class. Go go. The, what's the middle class? You know, tourist or whatever they call it these days. Yeah. I said, coach. But yeah, coach. But you know, if if you just want to go just regular, because you don't want to feel guilty. I mean, don't feel guilty about it. Spend some of your money and enjoy it. You know, uh, and and I think there there's a trade off there because if you make a lot of money, you also should spend a certain amount of it on things that are enjoyable and enjoy that money. Just don't use it all up, you know, because that's not going to do you any good either. S save something. Now, I mean, I know nothing about Phil's finances, but I, I bet he hasn't saved a hell of a lot, you know. So, anyway, yes, Jeff? Well, what about Shecky? Did he, does he have other people in his... Uh sisters and whatever the other family well, his family yes he, he has family you know are they in the same area are they in the same area I'm one of, I know his niece is in the same area yeah yeah you know but that has nothing to do with what I'm talking about with him 
I'm saying that I know, you, when he was okay, alive and he had all this that. money, and sometimes he would uh, kind of, uh, fr what's the word term I'm learning, fret about, uh, about spending it. And mm -hmm. I went, hey, you know, you're going on a nice trip, Take get there in the best possible way you can, you know? <laughs> if you can afford it, do it. You know, you're not, you should, you know, and you're still not going to spend all your money doing it, you know, but that there's a, there's a trade-off between how much you want to make sure you don't spend and how much you should spend to enjoy what you, the, the lucre that you've acquired, right? So it's, it's a, it's a trade-off, you know, um, and, um, uh, and I, I found myself at times feeling guilty about it too, you know. And I, you just shouldn't feel guilty about spending the money that you made. You should feel guilty about spending too much of the money you made. You know, so that's all I'm saying. I mean, what did you earn it for in the first place? And, and in the case of Shecky, or in the case of somebody like me, I mean, we don't really have anybody to leave the money to. I mean, Marjorie, I have money to leave money to, but suppose she goes first, then I've got nobody to leave it to. So, you know, me. huh? Oh, okay, uh, uh, Charlie, what's your address? Uh, give me all the information. So, I, huh? you know, I can add you we to can equally divide it, Charlie. Don't be, <laughs> yeah, that's what you, everybody on the panel, you ought to split. Yeah, it. we make your evening every evening. That, that That's worth something. Well, I, you know, I we have a will, and what I could do is I could probably add to the will that if um, Marjorie goes before I do, that, uh, and then I go, all the money that's there goes to you guys. Thank you. No, thank you. But, oh, I haven't, you. but I'm not saying it is, okay? So don't try and sue my estate once I die and say, where's my we'll money? Have, we'll have you two go back and read it, listen to it again. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah right. I think we should get points. You know, we should get points every night we're on. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe they will get some people on the show. <laughs> well, uh, yeah. Ch Charlie's been here every night almost for how many years now well ever since you've been doing the show okay so it's got to be like nine years right nine years yeah nine well, years so uh, uh charlie uh, i'm gonna leave you a dollar yes okay so well I you get, said like, i should like, leave you guys something yeah i get hey, like every four dollar year, helps 40 or 50 cents at least from that. Well, i'm just thinking 50 cents for you and 50 cents for adrian oh okay. <laughs> yeah. Just she'll enjoy it more than I will. <laughs> yeah, and that's the great thing about kids is you know give them a dollar and they're happy. And I don't have to like, leave wow, a whole dollar. Wow. I don't have to My leave. Uh, I don't have to dollar. leave Alan anything because he's got a lot of money. Uh, he's the rich. Him and Tony yeah. don't leave. No, he invested. Dime. He invested in apartment buildings and things yeah. like that. You know, but at the same time, let me ask you this: You've probably got more money than anybody here. I would say that. From what, yeah, you, what, no kids. from what you've I'm told I'm also me. fatter than everybody here. Well, too. that's true. You're going to die before the rest of us. So make sure we're all in your will. How did you uh, spell? I know how to spell your last name. I don't want to Jeffrey say it. Jeffrey A. Stein. <laughs> uh, you're, you're a Facebook friend that hasn't responded to any of my posts. So you better oh. start, <laughs> better start responding. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. My Facebook crashed a couple months ago, and I haven't reactivated it. So. But anyway, the point—the point that I'm making here is—is is that uh, uh, he has a lot of money, and yet I'll bet you don't spend a lot of it, do you? No. He sends no. us gifts. But I send you. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, you do. You're very good. You're very, you're very giving. I'm generous. You're generous. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but, but you're but, right. I don't spend a lot of it either. And you probably should, you know, because you'll uh, still have a lot of it left. You know, that's the point I'm making. It's that right. balance between enjoying the money you have. You know, I see these guys uh, today. What I see, uh, uh, yeah, um, who bought a house? Oh yeah, it was Beyonce and Jay Z. Bought a house. Ready? Two hundred million dollars. Oh, Jesus Christ. And they already own like five other homes. Okay? Uh, that didn't huh? change my face color. Oh, well. But see, I, I don't understand how, even if I had a billion dollars, how big a house do you need? I need I need a, I need a few bedrooms. I need a nice big kitchen, maybe basketball court, <laughs> you know, those type of things if I have unlimited money. But 
these guys have like these huge compounds. It's like, what are you gonna do with all that? Okay, Jeff Bezos and that whoever that slut is, he is hanging around with him, you know. And he's what going, about Al Pacino? He's going through his midlife crisis. Pacino. Has, Al Pacino, eighty-three, having kids. There's still hope there for you. There you go, Alan. There's there still hope for you, you Alan. We just heard this today. Al Pacino, 83 years old. His girlfriend is nine, eight, eight months pregnant. So, and she's how old? Oh, 29, I think. 29. <laughs> well, if she was 80, oh, if she God. was, if she was 83 like him, that'd be pretty much a miracle, you know. Yeah. But uh, anyway, uh, and also, you know who else at, tw at 79 has just had a had a kid? Mm -mm. Robert De Niro. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. Yeah. But hmm. there's rumor that there was a sperm donor and it wasn't him. He's gonna baby's oh. gonna come out black. <laughs> I thought his wife was well, black. his wife is black. Oh yeah. really? Oh, yeah. oh whoops. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Maybe come out Asian. How's that? Okay. Yeah, In go. fact, so is uh so is Pacino's. Mm -hmm. So oh. you know, it's it's uh, but uh, all I'm saying is is that uh uh you know um you got you got to find that I guess that balance you know between, like I said to myself, uh, how old am I? I'm 83. How old can I wind up being? Well, I could live to be 100. I, mm -hmm. I've seen people at 100, and I don't know if I want to be 100, you know, but I could live to be 100. But I don't know how I don't know how long I'm going to live. I could live two more days, or 20 more years, and I don't know. So, I have a certain amount of money. It's a finite amount of money. It's a fixed budget or whatever you say you're on. And it's a decent amount of money. Uh, and I'm not burning through it. But on the other hand, I keep saying, you know, maybe I should start spending some of it. You know, because God forbid I should drop dead tomorrow and, and what? You know, I didn't I didn't enjoy it. So if you yeah, knew you were gonna you know, die in a year, what would you do different? What would I do different? Yeah. Or would you do anything different? You guess stay with us every night? I would travel. Yeah. Yeah, I would travel. Yeah. I would travel. Yeah. And keep going till I die somewhere. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, kind of like kind of like a game of roulette. You know, like, where is it? We can have a contest. What country is Alex yeah. going to die in? You know? can have a pool. Yeah, that'd be great. Well, it's kind of like, like uh, Bubbles said, you know, wouldn't it be great if, you, you know, when you were going to die, but... But the, you knew the, the day, but not the, the day, year. but not the year. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so every year on that day, you'd be sitting there just waiting. You know? Yeah. But uh, no, I mean, I just you know, I just think that uh, 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 a lot of people hold on to their money and they are they they fret with every penny they spend and they've got a ton of it, you know. Yeah, but and, you don't want to run out of money and still be around. Well, I'm not saying you should spend enough so you're going to run out of money. You just right. want to spend, start spending some of it so you're enjoying it. I mean, do you ever re resent the fact, <laughs> that maybe, Alan, that you haven't what? spent some of that money on yourself doing something? You know, my, all my investments, I'm making, you know, a lot of money every month, and I don't spend any of the savings. Mm-hmm. You know, and so I, I, I make enough to live off of with just the investments. And okay, stuff. so you're living off that money. Yes. Okay. But not the investment. I mean, not the, not the bank accounts and the savings. That stuff has been sitting there. I thought I was going to buy a new car. Oh. And you've seen the price of new cars. Mm -hmm. Yeah. By the way, I started to mention Jeff Bezos. The mm. story I saw today was that Jeff Bezos, has, he has a house he's building, this mega mansion or whatever. But he's having some kind of zoning problems with it, and he can't move into it. So he's had to rent another house to live in while he's waiting for this one to be built and him being able to move into it. So he has taken a home that was owned by, I'm trying to remember who it was, some, some other rock guy. And uh, he is unfurnished, by the way, but he, he rented a house. How much do you think he's paying a month on that house? Hundred thousand dollars a month. Yeah, hundred thousand. Hmm. Well, try six hundred thousand dollars. 
dump. Say, well, he's got two hundred billion. So. Yeah, really. Well, that may be great if he has two hundred billion, but still, you know, you say to yourself, I mean, look, if you had two billion dollars, would you suddenly say, "How the hell with I'll rent that house for six hundred thousand dollars a month"? No. Oh. Why get somebody else real rich off of your money? You know. And if you've got that kind of money, why can't you pay off whoever the zoning people are <laughs> to like let you move into your new house? You know. So, but uh, I think that that's being a little yes, Jeff. Well, I think Brian has to think about. It. He's got three kids who ultimately want to go to college and whatever. Those become very expensive. <laughs> Yeah, well, that's fine to say, and he just made him cough and almost throw up, uh, swallow his tongue know, when he said that. I didn't want to get him have a heart attack, but I've got four grandkids who are, you know, they need, well, they me, need me, money. Uh, if, <laughs> if, if, if I'm getting too personal, Brian, stop me, okay? But stop. Two of the no. two, two of the three children that are in your house uh, are, are not yours. Correct. Right? Correct. Uh, and they're at a point where well, at least one or two of them are in time, and it's time to go to college, right? Are you going to take care of that? Um, how, are, how are you and the, and the wife working that one out? <laughs> uh, I'm probably going to buy them a car tomorrow. It's not an expensive car, but, but I'm pitching in there. Mm-hmm. Simon's the first one. He doesn't know what he wants to do for college, so he's going to go to local, probably community college, mm-hmm. and figure out what he wants to do. Stephanie wants mm-hmm. to do art, you know, art. So she has a couple colleges. She's only a freshman right now, but she knows. Mm-hmm. So yeah, so I mean, we'll be saving up for that. But yeah, I'm, yeah, I have a lot of money stashed, but but you you feel you want it, you kind of want to contribute. Oh to yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. Okay, okay. I mean. I mean you know, when it comes down to it, I have some assets, you know, I have some cars. So if something happens for me, you know, me today, there's a lot of money in 401k that I've had forever. And then, and then my car, see, it's different than, you know, some people in like Phil, where you know, they don't, they don't have like a 401k program, but I've been in the, you know, electronics industry all this time. So, you know, so every company I go to, they have 401k and I've always put a lot of money in there. So, yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, it, it, when it comes, you know, make sure everything's taken care of and you know just see what we need to do yeah whoever whoever gets my estate will be very well off yeah yeah but you know, now but you, I I mean, I, yeah. but you but i know i've what? talked you know my little talks with adrian you know and you know she will be definitely set for for you know for her stuff and she's only seven <laughs> so yeah. Well, she'll spend it on wax lips or something, you know. No. <laughs> like uh, hoochie dance lessons. <laughs> well, well, let me let me ask um, uh, again. Um, if I if I get too personal on any of these questions, please stop me. Alan, uh, you're not married. No. Were you married? Almost. Almost, no. but you're not married, so you don't have really any any descendants, right? No, well, I have, I have you have number. your mother. You have your mother. She'll, she'll be ninety soon. Yeah. So you want to take be sure she's taken care of, but since she's ninety, eh, you know you you. So let's say be, when she finally passes to the great beyond, let's say, yeah. and you don't have anybody to leave this to, who are you leaving this to? Well, my grand nephew, who's uh, very smart. A college educated 26 year old. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, they'll find somebody to give it to. Oh, yeah. I had an uncle that never had been married, never had any kids. And so mm-hmm. all of his nieces and nephews split the money. Mm-hmm. Hello, Tony. Are you there? Yeah. I'm, I was shaving in the bathroom. I, I was doing ancestry.com. You're never going to guess who my father is. Uh, Robert Phil. Zero. Phil. Al Pacino. This fucking guy's an asshole, really, Alex. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. We don't have a picture from you. It says it's, yeah. it's your eye. Oh, you know why? You want to see the ba- I'm in the bathroom. I was going to shave. I don't know if you want to see the bathroom. Why did you call? No, <laughs> why did you Because I had you on in the shower. I was listening to you. I had the phone on the wall. So I was listening to the first 20 Talk minutes. About 
demonetizing you. <laughs> Uh, shows up naked. Well, turn on I'm the, not turn naked. On, I got my undershirt on. Turn on the camera. <laughs> turn on the camera. Huh? Turn on the camera. Hold Do on you have a second. onesie on, Tony? Do you have on. your, your Spider-Man onesie? Hold on, hold on. Going on. I'm on my iPhone. Hold on. I had I had on in the shower next to my Costco thing. Oh, thing please make sure there's no going. mirror around. Make sure no, no mirror around. Right? Right? Hold on. <laughs> Can you see me? No. No. Oh, you're looking video. good. Turn on the Oh, I gotta light. go to settings. Hold on a second. I'm switching my Apple phone. I'm, I, I got you minimized. Tony, what settings. is this? Once a week? Well, I mean, how is Abuchino having kids, Alex? I almost fell in the shower when you said that. <laughs> well, Alan said it is sperm donors. Where's my camera? Yeah. Which leaves you oh, out, Tony. Uh, hold on. I'm trying to see here. I'm looking at my. I gotta get my last settings. <laughs> This fucking Apple. Everything they do has got to be like on the locked and key. What, what are you using? Your iPhone? Yeah, I mean, my, I had you on. Uh, I had you on uh, the iPhone, the radio, streaming it. Well, oh, uh, oh, okay. Well, what you'd have to so do? I was listening to it. What you have to know. do? Maybe I'll, hold yeah. on, I'm you, you don't want to have to hear me do this. Call back in thirty minutes. I'll yeah. call you back in about a minute. I get this camera working. <laughs> 30, thirty minutes. Brian's <laughs> idea. Yeah. Okay. Oh, and Alan is very generous. He sent me when I was sick a teddy bear and everything. I have to say that he's a decent guy. I know he's gonna kill me when I visit hey, him. And, uh, hey, Tony, I, I accept. I accept your calls. Okay, so that my time. Yeah, is Yeah, Brian's up there too. Wait work. a minute. Do you accept his calls? Yeah, my brother has to send you a check. For I need that, to. Brian. <laughs> I need to stay awake on the right to load eye. So Tony's the best. Thing <laughs> oh, I'm the wake up call that never goes away. An hour and a half. Not going the surface, Alex. Oh man! All right, hold on a second. All right, I'll call you back. Take your time. Thirty minutes is good. Okay. Either that, or I listen to his I was voice. Watching message. the Yankees with zero zero well, two. Okay, go go right, to your other, you go to your other computer and do it. Jeez. All right, bye. Yeah, you know, it's bad enough we have to see him. He's yeah, shaving at eleven thirty at night. Hmm. He says he's shaving. Yeah, it's what are you shaving? Eleven thirty p.m. Why would he be shaving it? I can't shave at night. It bugs me. I can't sleep. I can't sleep. I shave. I shave your hands at night because the coffee jitters are. I shave away. once a week. Once yeah. a week. Yeah. I may. Sh I may shave this week though because I've got to. I've got to go to this uh, memorial for Shecky on oh. Saturday, which in a in a, in a in a fashion I'm kind of dreading hmm. because are they you know I'm I was asked to speak. So I finally said, well, okay, uh, how much time do I have? And they said, three minutes. <laughs> and I wrote back and I said, you know, it's going to be really rough, you know, condensing 45 years yeah. into mm -hmm. three minutes. But I'll give it a try. And it, it's starting to really bother me. I mean, I've got the whole thing pretty well worked out what I'm gonna do and how I'm gonna say it because I gotta, I, I gotta have it all figured out. It's not like I get up and I ad lib and then after about five minutes I go, well, that's been long enough, you know? But every time I, I start thinking about it, I, I think about something new about him that I wanted to mention. And I can't mention it because I don't have enough time. Like for instance, I have certain facts about Shecky that people did not probably did not know. Yeah. One of which was, and this I found wonderful because I'm cowardly and won't, won't do it. He made it his job to try and ride all the major wooden roller coasters in America. Nice. <laughs> nice. And I bet there's not one person in that room that knows that. No. Nope. You know. Uh, I mean, it's just one of those little facts, you know. You didn't know about them, you know. So you did because you were a close friend. Well, I wanted to do that. There were a whole bunch of things I wanted to say. Do you know that he did this? And he did did, did mm -hmm. that. I mean, my biggest line, I guess, is going to be that the the one thing I learned from Shecky was when he went to the Antarctic. He told me that, you know, he was there, and he said, uh, uh, "I said, how were the penguins?" And he said, "There's nothing worse than seeing having a thousand penguins all shitting at the same time." You know, uh, you know, and I said, uh, you know, it gives a whole new meaning to those David Attenborough documentaries. 
You know, I can never look at one of these penguin movies and go, oh, they're so cute. All I can think of is, man, that shit must smell terrible. Oh, God, I hear that it does. Yeah, yeah. They don't call them fowls for nothing. Well, you know what it is? They eat fish. And that's why their shit smells so badly. But now you don't have just one little penguin. You've got thousands of little penguins. All right? And and so I thought I'd mention that. Well, what yeah. happens if you, you're supposed to give, what, three minutes? Yeah. What happens if you go to, to five minutes? Who's going to stop you? Yeah. They're going to kick you out? I, I don't know. I think they have the Academy Award Orchestra there to play me off, you know. You should just start crying and just cry for like three minutes and just can't, can't compose yourself and then your time's up. Yeah, I guess. But, you know, I mean, it just it kind of got to me because I went, well, I said I'd say, you know, they asked me if I wanted to give a little speech, right? And I went, yeah, sure I do. And, uh, uh, and then they told me three minutes, and I wanted to just say, well, forget it. I don't, don't want to do it, but I don't want to seem like a bad guy. But, you know, I mean, how do, how do I sum up 45 years in three minutes? It's impossible. It's just impossible. Uh, so I thought I would introduce my friend um, uh, Steve Weiner, who 45 years ago introduced me to Shecky, and that if they, he hadn't introduced me to Shecky, I would have never known him. And if he hadn't gotten Shecky a job at the Letterman Show, most of the people in that audience would have not known who Shecky was. Who he was. Yeah. 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 Which I think is amazing that all that happened because one person yeah, that's weird. You, you know, was that's common. Yeah, yeah. And he knew. And money. didn't you sell one of those guys who worked there, Alex? What? Cable. You told that story. You were selling when you were working in New York before they worked well, Bob, on Bob, the show. Bob Morton. Were, Bob Morton. Who was the yeah, producer. I don't know who that. Yeah. So you actually, they were. Yeah, that's even way that you had an interaction with somebody who wasn't even. Well, Bob Morton, for the audience who hasn't heard it already, Bob Morton, who's was the producer of the Letterman Show at one time, uh, Morty sold me. My first cable in New York City. Alex, they come door to door. They, like going, they went like door that? to door. Would you like to have cable? That's going to be. Oh, yeah. I think we didn't have the original box, so I wonder what it looked. Or like. I may have already had it. I can't remember. But but he told me years later. He says, you know, we met once before, and I said, where? And he says, I and Stu Smiley, who wound up being the head of comedy over at Showtime, uh, I and Stu Smiley were going door to door selling selling cable, and. Uh, uh, you were one of the people whose doors door we knocked on, you know. So I thought that was, you know, that was terrific, you know. But anyway, so I I'm just trying to so I I've, I've kind of just settled on those various things, and then I have a big closing that I do, usually at this kind of a a, a memorial, and uh, in which I uh, ask the audience. I mean, I can say it to you because who they're not listening. You know, they, and even if they are, they, then they won't be surprised by it. But I always say that at the end of it, I said, it's an old show business tradition, and there's nothing better than this for a person who has been in one way or another in show business. So I'd like everybody to stand up and give Shecky a big standing ovation. <laughs> and applaud. And I don't think anybody would be bothered by that. You know, yeah. I think they'll all do it. And, uh, don't. But Tony will be there. Now he's heard it. No, Tony's not going to be there. No, I'm not, I'm not there. As what? close of friends? Uh, never mind. It's not my uh, yeah, don't, don't, don't go there. Okay. Sorry. You know, uh, no, I mean, I would love to see Tony there. But oh, yeah. Tony was never I, I don't. Tony was never invited. Yeah, it doesn't bother me. Well, you know, I, I think that in his last years, he knew you quite well. Oh, yeah. And you knew no, him quite I mean, well. I mean, I... I said goodbye to him. I don't know if I told you, Alex. I said good the last time I went to visit him, I gave him a hug and I, you know, and and I just said you're a really great friend. And I have to thank Alex. I did say that we introduced me to him. Oh, I never became friends with him. Yeah, yeah. So I gotta say, I I sent you an email. I don't know if you messaged it. I sent it to something to say I told yeah. you thank you. But you know, ago. I mean, um, uh, it, it's just it's a whole the whole thing is being put together by a, a group of people who probably don't even know you exist. Oh, yeah, they don't know who I am. Yeah, Alex. yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, I think that that's the case in a lot of stuff. We had a funeral just last week from somebody at work, and she just moved down to L.A., where her two kids were, 
and then she passed away and then they wanted to do the funeral down there where nobody was and she worked for me for 20 years you know up here they finally got some common sense and they brought her body up here and they had the funeral because it's like all her friends and everybody were up here but people who were running it didn't know anything you know so they finally got the word out to some of us because none of her workers were there and, and she worked almost 20 years for me so yeah yeah but it's it's you know it, it and also my relationship to Shecky is different than the relationship of most of the people in that audience some of them some of them are people who work at Letterman in fact probably a great majority of them are going to be people who worked at Letterman there's going to be his family uh, who I've only met one member of his family his niece uh, I have I've never met his brother even though I've heard a lot about his brother, but I've never met his he brother. He told me a couple of stories that were fun, funny. What? Uh, about, uh, I don't know if he told you this one. Can I, it was like, I guess it was during the Vietnam War where they had like, uh, like they had like a, what did they have those things in the parks? They must have had like a protest. And by his house, there's a park there. I think it's, I forgot the name of the park. Yeah. And he said that he got up one morning. So when he went downstairs, some, somebody was laying on the couch. I guess he was a hippie, Alex. Really? So I mom, never heard that story. He said, Shaggy says, what did your mother say? She said, my mother's like, who is this? She, she said, I don't know. He said, I went back to the room and went to sleep. And I guess Mike brought somebody back from the protest to sleep yeah. sleep it off, I guess. Yeah. And then he, then he left, he yeah. goes. <laughs> But anyway, so I mean, I was uh, laughing, I I, I, I would my meeting his brother because I never did meet his brother, and I heard about him a, a lot about him, and he's probably knows who I am. Uh, but uh, it, it's a lot, a lot of Letterman people, some of his movie people. You know, he traveled in those crowds, and then there were people like myself who were just his friend. That was it. You know, there was no, there was no reason for our association other than we were friends. Uh, and uh, you know, I, I wasn't one of his film friends. I wasn't one of his family. I wasn't one of the Letterman people. What other? Oh yeah, he also had his cruise buddies. He used to love going on cruises. Yeah. So he had these this whole subset of people he knew from cruises. I, I knew none of them, you know, and probably none of them knew about me unless he talked about me, you know. He talked about you a lot when we were like he used to tell me funny stories like when you're on the radio like you know and stuff. He told me how he met you. I said like, but the birthday thing. I just get out of here. He said yeah. I didn't think he was gonna well, come. No, I was I was a birthday present for him. Yeah, he said I was totally shocked that I saw him. Well, that's said, no that's another that's that's the story I'm gonna tell is that I I started out yeah. by being his birthday present, which is the cheapest gift giving I've ever heard of in my life. He's, yeah. I couldn't believe he walked in. There's no yeah. way. I'm trying, yeah, all, I'm trying all the material out on you guys now. Mm. They don't like that story, Alex. That's nice. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's a sweet, it's a, it's a great story. You know? Yeah. Yes, Jeff. I, I used to get a couple of things from him. And they were always very interesting. But, you know, the one thing I, I always remember about him is he would go on, on trips mm -hmm. on, on a ship. And... He did two things. He always had a double room that he would rent for both places. No, he would take he would take a double. Is what he would double. take. So he'd okay. have a big room. That's how you see. That's that's where he would spend his money. Yeah. You know. And the other thing is, he never got off the boat. Well, he often said to me, "Hey, if you want to come on a cruise with me, come on." He says, "I take a room for two. He says, "I may as well. You you could come along," and I just I didn't do it for two reasons. Number one, Marjorie's always saying, "Let's go on vacation," and I we never go on vacation. So if I did it, she'd go, "Oh well, you can go on vacation with him." <laughs> you know? trouble, Alex. <laughs> and the other reason was is that the idea of cruises, for the most part, do not make me feel comfortable. That's like my mom and dad used to say, Alex. I feel like, what happens if like, they feel like I'm stuck on the boat, she would say. She would be afraid. Now, we're thinking of doing some cruises, but we're thinking of doing these, these you know, these long boats, you know, the ones that don't, you know, they only have maybe like 50 people on them. Okay. I don't want one with 5,000 people. That's on. a lot. Yeah. I, I, I heard about this guy. Uh, there was a cruise. I can't remember which company. And uh, the guy fell off the boat. No, and they weren't able to retrieve him or find him. Yeah. and I'm going. How did you even know he was missing? I was going to say, how <laughs> you know, we'll down five, one. <laughs> five thousand people on the goddamn ship, and 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 you're saying, hey, guy fell overboard. <laughs> well, so what? You know, it's just what's the on <laughs> the way back. <laughs> what percentage? Stop the what percentage of the people is that? You know, 
Exactly. But I don't, I, I, don't, I don't keep track of every person on the boat. I've been on a cruise with 5,000 people on it. Yeah. They knew where everybody was. Really? Wow. Yeah. Alex, if you go on a cruise over here on the West Coast, can you please let us know? Why? Because I know you're talking about doing Alaska or something like that. I'd love to go. You'd love to go oh, to Alaska? Yeah, that would be yeah, nice. I would probably sign up for that. Yeah, because I, I tried to have the family go to Alaska, and they're like, what are we going to do, just stare at glaciers? And I'm like, yes. So Did you say that like that's not the best. I heard that's I, – I had an old uh, engineer I worked for, and he said that uh, he was in the uh, Marines and he, or the Navy. He's been all over the world. He said that Alaska was the most beautiful. I, uh, the, I, I've been, I, one of the places we've been thinking about is, uh, is Iceland. Mm. Uh, Iceland's supposed to be incredible, but it costs a fortune. I mean, if you want to go for like eight days and really see like the real mm. stuff, uh, it's about fifteen thousand dollars a person. Wow! On a yeah, don't call me for that one. No, yeah, I don't, don't call you call for, me that for that one. Either. <laughs> no, but uh, yeah, no, I I've often <laughs> heard that 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 uh, Alaska cruise is one of the best. You can possibly yeah, take. I've had several yeah. people tell me that. Yeah, they come out of uh, San Francisco and then it goes up to like Glacier Bay and then hits like four different stops all the way down. Yeah, so it's really nice. Yeah. Or Seattle. Sorry, or it goes Seattle. out of Seattle. Yeah. 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 Are they big ships or small ships? These are the big ones. Yeah. yeah. These are the big ones. Uh, but I'm sure they have other ones, but that's that's well, no, definitely that's, a Seattle. You thing. know, I think we could we could survive that. But anyway, so I never went on one because I really the idea of cruise I'm just being stuck on a boat. You know, let's say I'm stuck on the boat now, and I don't mind being stuck on it with Shecky because he's my friend, and we can just talk for hours at a time if he wants to talk. There are other times Shecky just doesn't want to talk, right? But we, we're you know I could we could have I could have done that done that. But the idea of just being on the ship with all those other people. Yeah. It's a lot of you know, drink. I want to hide there. Yeah. Well, drink tickets. Yes, that's good. But, you know, he, he, I could have always done it, and I never I never did it, you know. Um, but uh, so, you know, but he's gone. What the hell, you know. It's been. Yeah, on a ship, on a ship all week with Tony. <laughs> Yeah, we won't invite Tony. Along. And take on. <laughs> we won't invite Tony along. Charlie can come. Yeah, yeah Charlie. And Jeff would Brian, be nice to have up, Jeff. Be ha nice to have Jeff on that cruise. And, Jeff, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know if if uh, if uh, our, our good friend Alan there is is even interested. Oh, I'd go on a cruise, especially. You could you could. Uh, Maybe get a radio station and let you talk on the radio station on the cruise. No, no, I would just do my show from the cruise. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah I'd go. But I've been on a couple cruises; they're fun. Yeah, but well, I know it would be. We could just get everybody together and go on a cruise. That would be fun, sure. Of course, sure. I have to approve it. I have to approve it through Marjorie. We'll go. Oh, boy. Boy. <laughs> well, I'm not going if Tony's going. Okay. I don't blame you. Oh. Alex, wake up. You got to see the waffles I got down there. I'm going to kill them. Check. He's right. Everybody throw them overboard. <laughs> you, no, you'd be thrown overboard. Yeah, with the sharks. Is there sharks? Go find out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh. yeah. But, you know, I mean, it's it, it's interesting. Uh, you know, the, the it's, um, you know, so I, 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 I want to do some traveling. I just time, It's time for me to do it, you know. Mm -hmm. What do I do with this? Well, we'll do GabNet when I'm not traveling, you know. And if you there's because the, you, you like taking the photos and the videos too when you leave the country, that would be nice. Yeah, I don't know if I have the strength to do the videos anymore. You know, that takes. You, know. That takes, you know what it does though? It has <laughs> it, it has spoiled many a vacation for me. I mean, I have a beautiful documentary of my trip to China. Just go online, look up China, Alex Bennett. It's to you've all probably seen it, right, Charlie? Yeah, sure, yeah. yeah. I've seen some of it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I've seen the whole thing. Yeah, but it thinks about an hour, hour and ten minutes, and it's it's terrific. But that's the most I saw of China because I didn't see China. You know, I saw it through a viewfinder, and uh, and so sometimes you just want to put the camera down and just say to hell with it. You know, uh, uh, how many of these things do I want? I want to have a memory of going to like Paris or someplace like that, and then the only memory I have is that I had a camera to my eye, you know. So, yeah. 
Plus, Go and enjoy it. Yeah. Plus, it's a question of the cameras you're going to use and so on and so forth because i found that you, what you need to shoot, you can shoot with an iPhone. That's it. You know, you'll have the best looking <clears throat> pictures you've ever seen in your life. You know, so. Yeah, I just did. We went to Santa Maria for a big car show down there, and I did a lot of filming. Usually I have my GoPro. Mm-hmm. I have my GoPro, but I ended up trying my, I, my iPhone this time. And I have these cars that are coming through, and I can zoom all the way up, and they're still crystal clear. They're really the, nice. The, the, the um, iPhone is, I think, of all the cameras I have, the best one for video so far. I just bought this one, and I haven't decided whether I, whether it's good enough or not. It has a certain, it doesn't do a stabilization as well as I would like it to. This is a Sony camera, and, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's good. It'll be terrific at some point if I want to use it, but... Uh, uh, the kind of camera I'd really like to use is a bit on the heavy side, you know, and I, I don't know if I want to just go, I'd just rather go around Europe, and if I see something that I want to shoot video of, I'll just take out the camera, you know, the iPhone and do it, or take out the GoPro. I can put all these things in my pockets, you know? Yeah. So, but, so anyway, that's, that's Pam that. Pam went yeah, to yes, uh, Paris. Huh? Pam went to Paris today. W- when did she go to Paris? Today. Oh, today? Today. today yes. And she left you home. That's right. I decided not to go. Why did you decide not to go? I don't know. I didn't feel it. Well, she's going to see some some art stuff that's in Denmark or something. And you're not interested. And it's It was kind of boring for me. But the other part is being on an airplane and having to keep your mask on there and all that I don't stuff. think they have you wear masks all the time now anymore do no, they Charlie no, why sense. wouldn't you at yeah. our age I, I know but Charlie do they have you wear masks now on planes I haven't been on a plane no but since. I'm asking you because you usually <clears throat> keep up with this kind of stuff you don't have I, to I don't know you don't have yeah to. I don't think you have to but yeah. you may want to I'll tell you why I don't want to travel on a plane because it's a pain in the ass you know, when I was younger, when I was a young man, and I get a, and I and I go on an airplane flight. To begin with, you got on a plane, everybody was dressed up. Oh, you yeah, know, yeah. they were all wearing ties and shirts. You know, yeah. women oh, yeah. were wearing nice frocks and so on. And if you were my age, you kind of wore a nice little jacket, and you know, it was fancy schmancy, right? Yeah. Uh, no more. You know, I mean, do you ever see anybody wearing a suit on a on a plane trip? No. Kids go to schools in their pajamas. Yeah. <laughs> do they really? Yes, they do. They go to school in their pajamas. Oh, I wish I was in school again. <laughs> but they wear sneakers, right? Yes, and a jacket. They, but they wear, they wear, <laughs> yes, pajamas to school. Really. Yes, yes. Well, I mean, you know, it's fine with me, but all I'm saying is that when I used to fly on airplanes, you know, you got they gave you a nice little dinner. It was pretty good. It wasn't bad. You know, it was it was small, but it was good. And and uh, you had nice meals and things like that. And oh, hey, would you like us to fill that up with a little more champagne? Uh, you yeah, mean, he, you mean here that. in coach? Yes, of course, here in coach. You're flying United. You know, and they just tried to p- pamper you and everything. Mm-hmm. Now it's like, uh, uh, you, you want to use the bathroom? Well, I'll let you know yeah, when it's course. available. Yeah, I mean, it's just, it's just, it's, it's hard. Traveling is horrible. And then going through, uh, you know, going through TSA and all that crap, you know. So it, it, it's taken all the pleasure out of that. So if I am going to go through that, I've got to go somewhere where I'm going to spend like two weeks. You know, so that I only have to do that twice in that period of time. But I don't want a trip where I'm traveling a lot on airplanes from one place to another every five days or something because, God, I spend half the time at airports going through TSA. That's what's nice about a cruise. Yeah. They, you get on the cruise, you unpack, you get off, but you leave your luggage there and you do things during the day. Yeah. And then. You know, and then you go back on the ship well, and they move to the next port. Well, that's what I've heard from people that, yeah. you know, and that that's what they like about it. Mm-hmm. You know, 
Uh, uh, but Shecky used to just like to sit out. He had a little, you always get one with a deck, a little porch or balcony or whatever, and sit out in the balcony and read a book, have a cocktail, you know, mm-hmm. enjoy himself, you know, and that, that to me is fine. Yeah, that's um, but then I thought to myself, well, gee, but if you're taking a cruise, it stops places. Don't you want to go see those places? And he said, I've already yeah. taken those cruises before. I just let everybody else go and I stay on the boat. You know? Yeah, there are a lot of people that stay on the boats. Yep. Yeah. 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 Well, I'm old enough where I'm probably going to stay on the boat and just look out the window and go, ooh, nice ice flow. You know, things like that. But I'm not going to Antarctica. I am not going to Antarctica because I don't want to smell penguin shit. <laughs> You'll probably go to the New York Zoo and they probably have penguins there. What? Oh yeah. I oh yeah, we do. We, we, we do have it. We do. San Antonio Zoo. Oh, we have a zoo. Yeah. We have a zoo right here in Central Park. About yeah. t- maybe twenty, thirty blocks from me is the Central Park Zoo. You know. They have ge- they have geese and they have uh, that are going to Canada. I heard you little five minutes. Well, I have. I, I I took a great shot of those geese. Yes. All just all just traveling like uh, mama, and then five du- little ducklings, and then daddy on the end, and they're just floating along, and then they all get out of the water, and daddy is. I noticed daddy in the back was doing the, you know, pushing them on by going with his head like this, you know. Huh. But I love I that know. shot. I wonder if the geese complain about bags under their eyes too. <laughs> it, I thought it was funny that you spent so much time on that. You know, you're you know, I, I I don't think you have that much bags under your eyes. Well, that's only because of the lights. Okay, well, whatever it is, I don't know, but that's how I see. Also, you. all the makeup I slather on myself before doing this show. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. So anyway, so you know, it's a question of uh, uh, traveling. Uh, I like to do some traveling, you know. And if I had one year to live, well, how would I spend that one year? Complaining that I was aching a lot. <laughs> uh, I thought you were gonna say complaining that you only had one more year to live. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I mean, I've had a lot of people I've known have only had a short time to live. Ronnie, my ex-wife. Yeah. You know. And then there was something really fast, like Shecky, which I never expected. You know, it just amazed me. I guess I wasn't paying enough attention, but I was talking to his, also his other best friend, this woman, and uh, she said she didn't know it was as bad as it was. You know, so, and she well, you was- You couldn't tell from the show. No, you couldn't tell from the show. show. That's right, that's right. Um, and you know, you know uh, what's his name, Don Giller, who calls the show? Mm-hmm. Uh, who does all the Letterman videos, most of the Letterman videos that you've seen for years on, on YouTube. Uh, he said he has, uh, all the times that Shecky did those shows with me, those uh, little, what do you call it? The, the, what do we call the shows? Uh, the pop-ups. Uh, uh, uh. And he is going to condense all the times that Shecky and I talked with each other extensively on that show and put it on one reel. Hmm. So I'll make sure that everybody that does that show somehow is going to have access to that when it's done. But yeah, I need it. I need to sign a release, please. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, hey, listen, everybody, I'm playing the theme right now, which you can't hear for some reason. You can't forget Nick. One of the mysteries of life. Before I die, that's what I want to do with my last year in life: is figure out why you can't hear the music. <laughs> or a year, you're going to try to figure that out. <laughs> anyway, thanks to Charlie. I appreciate it, Charlie. Thanks to Brian. Thank you, Brian. Uh, thanks to Albert, by the way, for talking to us earlier. That's also, good. thanks to our, uh, our our good friend Alan and uh, Jeff. Great talking to you and Tony. Always a pleasure talking to you. Everybody, give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye back at you, okay? There they go, folks. That's our that's our citizen panel for tonight. We'll be here again tomorrow night. Uh, Jack Bishop is next with The Intersection. Uh, he'll be taking your calls at GabNet Live, okay? GabNet Live. In the meantime, I'll see you tomorrow, same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Good night, everybody.